So I'll be talking about my journey as a new airflow committer. And in this journey, I'll share the story of how I became a committer and um, the lessons I've learned and um, um, what I look forward to as I continue on this journey. So I am Ifrema Nirobi, like she said, and I'm a software developer at Astronomer, uh, also a committer in Apache Flow. Actually, I became a committer about two months ago. Uh, I, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical electronics engineering. I'm from Nigeria, and my hobbies are do-it-yourself stuffs and listening to podcasts. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter or GitHub at Ifrem Body. So um, before talking about uh, Airflow, I would like to talk about the time before I started con contributing to Airflow. So I actually started programming in 2013. Um, and not long after, I got a job um, in, in a completely different field as, as an electrical engineer. So those period, like from 2013 to last year, 2020, I. I was learning coding by the side and trying to, um, because I have passion for programming. So I was seriously learning by the side while I continue working on, by, on, on, on the job. So I created a lot of websites for people during this period. And I also created what I called startups then, like Naira Bricks and Doom Water NG. So I've, I've actually taken those sites down there are, there are no more available online. You can only see them in Wayback Machines um, and also on Twitter. Well, my reason for creating those sites then was because I have passion for programming and I was working, working out a way to, to leave um, my, my job uh, and, and face programming, like work as a programmer full time. So, but <laughs> they, I couldn't make any money from those sites. So, I stayed there for like six years, and I also have fears um, to, to apply for jobs in, in other um, in programming because um, nobody uh, coaches me. I don't have any mentor. I was just coding and publishing um, websites and even enjoy some media coverage, but nobody has seen my code. So I was scared to actually apply for programming job in Nigeria. Um, or what I did was um, I just <laughs> I just decided to just um, continue pro um, making websites and maybe one day I'll start making money. But I, I didn't make enough money to leave the job then. And in the way Nigeria is, um, it's very difficult to get a junior role in in the tech space um, unless you are you are in Lagos or yeah, it's only in Lagos that you can can easily get. A, a tech road, and I'm staying far from Lagos. So I was like, if I get, if I leave my job and get a junior role in, 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 in uh, get a junior developer role, uh, am I going to do work there? Because nobody has seen my code and to, to encourage me or say that, that I need to do this or do that. So I continued in, on my job. And one day in uh, last year, last year, January, I found outreach on Twitter. I was like, whether this is actually real because um, they were promising that they're going to pay me for three months and, and also give me mentorship for three months. So for those who don't know, outreach is, a, is an initiative that provides paid remote internship for people that, that are underrepresented in the technical industry they are living. So I fall into this group because I was not close to Lagos. We, had, and we have a tech hub in Nigeria. And as a junior developer, I, I have a very, very small chance of getting into the industry. So I decided to join the outreach because of the mentorship for three months, uh, because I believe that if I get mentorship, I'm going to improve. So I made my first commit on March 10 and I received a lot of good reviews. Um, those, those reviews was actually what led me to, to now decide that, yeah, I'm going to leave my job and face uh, outreaching because I received 
uh, after some commits, I received a lot of uh, reviews that told me that this is, is actually uh, like I, I, I'm going to succeed in this field. So I decided to take the risk of resigning my full-time job for outreach. Outreach is just three months. That is why I say I said is a is a risk because uh, my former job is, is a full-time role. So uh, outreach is just three months. But I decided that uh, I have to leave outreach. And so I have to leave the job and face outreach because of the wonderful reviews I got when um, I was accepted in outreach. So on becoming a committer, I want to start by um, talking about what a committer is, who a committer is. And for those um, that are already committers, uh, I know you all know all this, and uh, I apologize. Uh, this is, uh, my target audience is just those that are new to programming and those that also want to become committers. So um, a committer is anyone with right access to an Apache project. Now, it's more, much more than that. You, you have the right to approve PRs and match PRs. Uh, it's a kind of validation that you also understand the code base and you're also willing to improve it. So I, I would say that outreach, astronomer, and the community is what made me a, commit, a committer. So outreach provided me mentorship. When I was in outreach, Kazi and, and Jarek mentored me, and I, I really enjoyed my time then. I received a, a lot of reviews from the community, and Astronomer is actually doing much more today. They pay me to work full time in, in Apache Flow, and I enjoy mentorship from Kazi. Ash, I, I, I have one on one with Ash almost every week. Yeah, it's every week. I want to work here with the book codes and do a lot of things. So astronomer and the community that provides reviews on my peers are what made me a committer in Apache Flow. Um, I got mentorship through code reviews. So all this made it possible for me to become a committer and also my determination that I'm going to succeed in that field, in this field. So, so some of the important lessons I've learned um, are these. Number one is that I discovered that I need to put more time for my personal development. Even though the, the company want me to work eight hours, if I have the strength, I usually put in more, more hours because I know that it's also for my personal development. So I actually, during my outreach days, um, I had a chat with Kami. Kami, Kami Bregler is, is, is a PMC member in Apache Airflow. Kami told me something, he told me about his, his, his um, how he, become, he became a, commit, a, a committer and everything about um, his programming journey. And he said something that actually entered my ear. He said that if I actually want to succeed, that I need to put in the time. I need, I need to really work out that Sometimes he works more than 12 hours a day to, to, to meet up. And I was like, I'm still learning, and this guy is already expert on this, and he's still spending more hours. Um, and that coupled with um, my observation of the people in the community, how they um, actually um, dedicate their time to the project, it really helped me to, to now put in my best, put in the time, and I, I started to grow and I started to learn and improve my skills. So, uh, the, the, another lesson I learned is that if nobody sees your code, you are probably doing it wrong. Like if you're like me and you're not con contributing to open source, I think you should, should start contributing now because it's through your contribution that people will see your code and see things that you're not doing very well and correct you on that. So I learned that I need to actually be contributing and letting people see my code so that they can tell me what I'm not doing well and I'll start doing it well. Um, another thing I learned is communication. I learned that written communication is hard, actually in code reviews. I'm still improving in this, but I have learned a lot in how I give reviews on PRs and how people give reviews on, on my... I read to, I, Sometimes I read people's PRs 
um, reviews to see how they reviewed some code. And this communication is actually a very important thing that I, I have learned and I really appreciate it. Um, another thing is that you can get mentorship without going through outreach or log sum of code. So if you are like me, don't just spend six years in a company because nobody sees your code. You can get mentorship by contributing to open source. And when you contribute, people will see your code and review your code and you'll get better. So those are the, some of the, less, the important lessons I can actually remember now, but I have learned really a lot in, 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 in this uh, project. So I look forward to helping people make their first commits. And like in Nigeria here, we have a lot of people, very smart people that don't know that they need to contribute to open source to, to really get better. So um, my plan is that I will, I will start advocating for more contributors and helping people become committers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also available in case you want to contact me and seek for, seek for advice. So I also look forward to becoming a better contributor myself. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This is just the end. Thank you. Ibrahim, thank you so much. Thank you. I, love, I love the cats at the end. I'm a big cat fan. <laughs> This is just a really excellent presentation because it was your journey as someone who at the beginning you were kind of like unsure of yourself and thanks to your diligence and your hard work um, you've, you've begun to see results which is really really encouraging. So I want to open this up to a question. Um, I, if, while we, there's a little bit of a, like a time delay between our transmission and Crowdcast, so if people want to drop down their questions and to ask a question, and in the meantime, if I, I'd like to ask you about, um, if you can talk a little bit more about the importance of mentorship and getting your code reviewed. And because as someone who's, I, I did a coding boot camp, I know exactly what you're talking about when you say, if people aren't looking at your code, you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> so if you could, you know, maybe share a little bit more about that, about the mentorship and getting your code reviewed. Yeah, actually, a lot of new programmers actually find it difficult to show people their, their code. It's happened to me, like, uh, I'll be like, uh, why, why would somebody see my code? And, and like this, maybe the person will condemn my code and all that. So um, I have learned that making uh, making your code available and uh, showing people to that what you are trying to do really helps to to really um, learn something new and add something to what you already know. Because I have created a lot of PRs in Airflow, and I receive wonderful reviews. Those reviews are what helps me to improve. And sometimes I repeat the mistake, but most of the reviews I've gotten really help me a lot. And it's, it's actually the best way that somebody can improve. Mentorship in open source is not just um, when somebody calls you and discuss with you or tell you what to do, or it is through the code reviews that, that, that you uh, actually, the code that you write and that people review um, those are things that you, um, from from here, you get the mentorship. So, yeah, it's just, it's just it about mentorship. Okay, so we have a question. What do you think was the hardest part of your, your journey as a contributor? And, or can you share a specific challenge you've had? Yeah, what I think was the hardest part of my contributor journey is making the first commit. Because um, I spent I spend more than a week trying to understand the code base. 
So that, but what I did was that even before, before I made my first commit, I didn't know everything on the code base. I just saw what I can be able to, a, 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 an issue that I, I think I'm, I, I can be able to, to, to resolve. And I followed the code, how the issue was described. And, and I think finding where to change the code was the, the biggest challenge I had. Um, but because of my experience with, um, because my, my first commit was on, on SQL Acme. So because of my experience in it, I just, I was able to make a commit. But that is, finding where to change the code was my biggest, um, um, my, my hardest, uh, uh, hardest part of my contribution, contributor journey. So after the first commit, after the reviews, I got more, um, like I, I felt more relaxed. Like I can make more commits. That, that people really like what I did. So uh, getting that first commit is the hardest part. I'm not even to put it. <laughs> that that sounds like very understandable. It's getting started that is sometimes the hardest part. And Leo wants to know what would you say to someone who is nervous to contribute to Airflow for the first time. Yeah, if somebody wants to contribute to Airflow for the first time, um, Airflow has a lot of con uh, documentation on how to contribute. Uh, I will advise anybody that wants to contribute, especially if you are new to programming, to, to watch some videos on how to contribute. Tarek made a lot of videos, and those videos were what helped me to set up my environment. Um, Airflow is not... It's, it's a very complex project. So any new person should, first of all, watch the videos and then check um, the, the issues. There are some issues that are tagged good first issues. You can start there because somebody has looked at the issue and see that that issue is very easy to fix and mark it as good first issue. So that is it. And that actually is a great segue for our next speaker. Um, we are up on the time for your Q&A, Ephraim. So I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your journey as a new committer and now sharing um, this information about how to get started on your first uh, commit. You mentioned, um, you know, watching videos and tutorials.